Hi, my name is Alyssa, and in our work, we present a method for model selection for deep audio source separation via clustering analysis. This is work with Prem Sita Raman and Professor Brian Pardo at Northwestern University. In this paper, we address audio source separation, the task of separating an audio mixture into isolated sounds from individual sources. As human listeners, we do this automatically. For example, in a busy conference hallway from the before times, we can selectively listen to a colleague. And when we move outside, we can hear a dog barking and cars driving by as separate audio events. Moreover, we can easily handle different types of auditory environments, even though we actually employ different auditory cues in these different settings. However, existing deep learning algorithms for source separation are trained on specific domains and do not generalize to new ones out of the box. Using a model trained to separate overlapping voices will not produce usable results when applied to separate environmental sounds. Practically, this means that the end user must know enough about each model's training to select the appropriate model for a given audio mixture. This limits how models can be deployed and imposes a bottleneck on adding source separation to an automation chain. So we were motivated by the question, given an audio mixture whose source domain is unknown, can we automatically select the best model for the mixture? To do this, we develop a confidence measure that can be applied to systems that perform clustering-based separation. Each of these diagrams here, uh, the three diagrams, uh, represent clustered embedding spaces produced by the model. Then we can apply this confidence measure to predict the separation quality for each model's output and therefore select the separation with the highest confidence as the final output of the model. In this way, we can think of the confidence measure as mediating among several source separation models in order to select the most appropriate model for the given mixture. In particular, our confidence measure does not require any training nor access to the training distribution for each model. We believe that this can transform the range of applications where source separation can be applied. In the previous example, where we move from an indoor social setting to an outdoor setting, we can use this method to build a hearing aid that can automatically switch models from one trained to separate speech from speech to a model trained to separate environmental sounds. Our confidence measure is based on clustering-based source separation algorithms. As a bit of background, given the spectrogram of an input audio mixture, clustering-based models are trained to map each time frequency point to embeddings in a higher dimensional space. Its objective, its training objective, is to encourage time frequency bins from different sources to be far from each other in the embedding space and bins from the same source to be close together. This way, at inference time, we can simply cluster the embeddings to estimate the original sources. We choose to focus on clustering-based separation algorithms in this work due to its interpretability. Now, the key insight of our confidence measure is that the clusterability of the embedded TF points is predictive of the quality of the separation. Intuitively, if the points are poorly separated into clusters, as in the picture on the left, then we expect lower separation quality. If the points are well separated, as in the picture on the right, then we would have higher confidence in the separation quality. So we develop our confidence measure via an analysis of the embedding space. So how do we actually measure the clusterability of the embedded points? Our confidence measure has two components. First is the silhouette score, which measures whether the clusters are tight and far away from each other. To measure whether clusters are tight with reference to a point xi in cluster ck, we use the intra-cluster distance. That is, we calculate the distance between xi and every other point xj in the same cluster ck, and we use the intra-cluster intra distance for xi, which is the mean of all of those distances. Next, to measure whether the clusters are far away from each other relative to the point xi, we use the intercluster distance. We calculate the distance between xi and every point xj in the most neighboring cluster, um, which in this case is the only other cluster. Um, and the intercluster distance with respect to xi is the mean of these distances. Note that the intracluster distance a of x measures tightness within clusters, so we want it to be low. Intercluster distance b of x measures distance between clusters, so we want it to be high. So to combine the intracluster distance and intercluster distance, we subtract a of x from b of x and scale it by the maximum of these two values so that the silhouette score s of x always ranges between negative one and one. Now, it would be intractable to compute this score for every TF bin since every point must be compared to every other point in its own cluster and in the neighboring cluster. 
So we sample 1,000 points from the loudest 1% of TF bins. This is because the assignment of louder time frequency bins is more important perceptually than softer time frequency bins. We take the mean silhouette score across the 1,000 sampled points to estimate the silhouette score S of big X for the entire mixture. Now let's take a look at the second part of the confidence measure, which is the posterior strength. Whereas silhouette score uses only hard cluster assignments, we also want to capture the strength of membership of points to their assigned cluster. Um, for example, here X sub i is closer to the center of mass of its assigned cluster and has strong membership, whereas X sub j, even though it's assigned to the same cluster, is more so in no man's land and has weaker membership to that cluster. Soft K means the clustering algorithm we use produces a posterior for every point X sub I in, in regards to CK, which indicates the strength of the membership of the point to the cluster. This is true for any soft clustering algorithm that produces par partial membership to clusters. So here, this equality says that um, the, oh, this equality says that the posterior of X sub I with respect to cluster C sub k is greater than the posterior of x sub j with respect to the same cluster C sub k. The posterior range is between 0 and 1. We compute the posterior strength of um, x sub i as follows. So that if a point has maximum posterior strength, uh, mass, maximum posterior of 1 over k, indicating equal assignment to all clusters, then the numerator is 0 and the point has posterior strength of 0. If a point has maximum posterior of 1, indicating full assignment to one of the clusters, then the numerator is k minus 1, um, so the point has posterior strength of 1. Therefore, the posterior strength for a point ranges between 0 and 1. Um, the overall posterior strength for the mixture P of x is the mean posterior strength for the loudest 1% of time frequency bins, again because these bins are more perceptually significant. To combine the silhouette score and the posterior strength for a single confidence measure for the mixture, we multiply them together to ensure that the overall score is high only when each component is high. Now that we have our confidence measure, um, we design our experiment. Um, so we consider three audio domains, music, speech, and environmental sounds. For music, the task was to separate singing voice from accompaniment. For speech, the task was to separate two speakers talking simultaneously. For environmental sounds, the task was to separate two environmental sounds from one another. For example, while isolating a dog bark from a car horn. The data sets are constructed from MuseDB, Wall Street Journal, and Urban Sound 8K, respectively. For each domain, we train a domain-specific model with the deep clustering objective. The network for each domain is identical. Two BIOS TM layers with 300 hidden units in both directions. Just for visualization, this is a 2D heat map of the embedding space for a music mixture produced by the three different models. So the one trained on speech, the one trained on music, and the one trained on environmental sounds. In the embedding space produced by the music model, there are clearly two dense areas uh, in the embeddings, uh, two areas dense in embeddings representing the two clusters. In comparison, the speech and environmental sound models return distributions with no, no clear cluster, clusters. The more clusterable distribution produced by the music model is reflected by a higher confidence measure. Um, so the first thing we investigate in our experiments is whether or not the confidence measure correlates with ground truth separation quality measured via a signal to distortion ratio. In this graph, each dot represents a separated source by the speech model on speech mixtures, and the blue line is the best fit found through linear regression. The graph shows a clear relationship between confidence and SDR with R value of 0.85. We also note that uh, same-sex mixtures are harder to separate than different sex mixtures according to both confidence and SDR, which makes sense. We observe similarly strong correlations on the music and environmental domains. Now recall that our original goal is to select the most appropriate model for a given mixture. So we next compare different methods of choosing a model given an audio mixture. The columns here represent different domains of input mixtures. So we have speech mixtures, music mixtures, and environmental sounds, mix, sounds mixtures. Um, and the columns represent methods of choosing one of the three domain-specific models. 
In the case of the Oracle Ensemble, the input mixture is separated by all three models, and the SDR is calculated for each model's output by comparing the separated sources to the ground truth sources. The output with the highest SDR is chosen. So the Oracle Ensemble represents an upper bound for any ensemble. In the case of the Confidence Ensemble, the input mixture is also separated by each model. But rather than using SDR, which requires access to the ground truth sources, we calculate the confidence for each separation. The output with the highest confidence is chosen. In other words, we are using the confidence measure to mediate switching among the different domain-specific models. The random ensemble randomly selects a model to separate the input mixture, each with equal probability. And finally, these are the three domain-specific models trained on one audio domain, um, and we apply it to all of the uh, examples we consider. Predictably, uh, yeah, so for this section, predictably models perform best on domains they are trained on and very poorly on domains they were not trained on. Um, this is what motivated a more general system that works on mixtures even when the domain is unknown. Um, so we, when we compare these two rows, we see that the confidence ensemble significantly outperforms the random ensemble in all domains and on music mixtures in particular, the model achieves close to Oracle performance. We also notice that in all cases on any given domain, the Oracle ensemble slightly outperforms the domain specific model on that domain. This means that, for example, um, some environmental sounds mixtures were better separated according to SDR by a model trained on another domain than by the environmental sounds model. This shows why simply detecting the audio domain of the input mixture is not enough. In addition, even though the models we consider in our experiments are all domain-specific models where the training domain is known, our method can generalize to any number of models and does not require knowledge of the training distribution. Um, so in conclusion, we present a confidence measure that effectively estimates the performance of clustering-based source separation algorithms, and we apply this confidence measure to effectively select the most appropriate model for a given mixture. Thank you.